that you've got your data entered for your incline air track lab for the low incline and the high incline, we're going to make graphs using that data. Uh, by the way, my data is completely made up, and so it looks nice, but it's not going to be anything. The numbers probably won't be the same as yours. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, when you make your graphs on your Chromebook, you can use sheets to make graphs, but it's actually, I think, really kind of a pain with all the clicking that you have to do. So I'm going to use something called Graphical Analysis, which is an app that you can get from um, on your Chromebook from the Chromebook store. And when you use Graphical Analysis and open it up, it's uh, it's it's not as good a spreadsheet as Logger Pro, and so it's probably easier to do this kind of hybrid method where you do all of your data manipulation in Sheets, which is a great spreadsheet, and then go ahead and just copy and paste the data into a manual entry graph in Graphical Analysis. So here's a Graphical Analysis window. You'll see it's always got a graph here and a uh, data table here. I'm pretty sure you can actually like turn the data table off if you only want to show the graph. But the way you're going to end up using this is you're probably going to take this graph and, and uh, screenshot it or, or um, copy and paste it into, um, into your Google Documents for your lab report anyway. So having a separate page for it doesn't really have as much um, importance as when we were printing stuff out on paper back in the olden days. So what we want to do is we want to import our data. So all I'm going to do here where the X is, click on those three dots, go to column options, and change this. Our first graph is position versus clock reading. So I'll change this to clock reading in seconds. And I'll change this to position in centimeters. Okay. And we're going to have two data sets. So I'm going to go rename this data set to low incline. And I'm going to make a new data set. Add new data set. And I'm going to rename that data set high incline. There we go. So now I'm just going to copy and paste my data. And for this first graph, luckily enough, our data is in adjacent columns that are in the actual right position. So we've got clock reading position here. So I'm just going to click up here. I'm going to scroll down to my last point. Shift click. That didn't work. Click down here, shift click, there you go. Or you can drag, you know, you can either drag like this or you can click on one and shift click on the other. That will select all of your data. So click there, shift click there. Sorry, <laughs> click there, shift click there. I thought it looked odd with a seven down there. And then I will hit either edit copy or Command C, and then go back into here and paste it into graphical analysis. And then I'll do the same thing with my high incline readings, and clock reading and position copy and paste. See, and so there's all our data right there. Now, uh, we want a graph that has both sets of data on one set of axes. So if you go over here to uh, the graph window, or the graph pane, and you hit this button that says change y axis, we want the position on the y axis, but we want both data sets. So we'll, we'll just click on the switch for both. And now you can see that both sets of data are on our axis. Uh, we're missing a couple things. One, we need a title. So let's go to edit graph options. Change the title to position versus clock reading. And we want points, not lines, so that's fine. We want the scaling to be automatic, but always show zero is what I always what I usually pick here. Just like we did in Logger Pro. And then we hit close and there's our graph. Now we need a curve fit, so we're going to uh, click on this little button down here again. Hit apply curve fit. And we don't want lines. What we want is probably quadratic here. And hit apply. And there you go. And I wonder if you turn off the data table, maybe, and then kind of drag this up a little bit. Nope. Well, I was hoping that we could get that to not cover up our data, but maybe there's a way. That's Pretty close. 
you guys could probably be more creative with your, I don't know, maybe your Chromebooks give you more space than my MacBook does, I'm not sure. But that's good enough. It's as good as it's gonna get. Turn the data table back on. All right, now, next thing we wanna do, uh, let's just get rid of that for now, is we wanna change this to a position versus clock reading square graph. So I'll just come in here, column options, clock reading squared, seconds squared, hit apply. And the cool thing is it will change actually both data sets so you don't have to do that twice. And then we'll just uh, copy and paste our clock reading squared data in. So all we have to do here is grab the clock reading squared numbers, copy, paste, and then do the same thing on the high end line. And there you go. And one thing you'll notice is that uh, it didn't linearize the graph. Why didn't it linearize the graph? Because hopefully you remember when we did our first position versus time squared graphs, um, we saw, we, we know that that only works in a special case. Because remember that, um, remember that uh, that only works when the other terms in the quadratic equation are zero, when the initial velocity is zero and when the initial position is zero. And you can kind of see what happened there is it only works when the vertex is on this y-axis because then what happens is you need to spread out the x-axis so that <clears throat> so that the uh, the change in position that's bigger and bigger with successive times uh, is compensated by the squaring of the time. So that's position versus clock reading square graph. Next is our velocity versus time graph. Remember that we need to use middle times for that. So we'll take middle time. And I need to change the name of the column. Back to clock reading. This is velocity. Centimeters per second. Multiply. And we will grab the velocity data. Low incline, middle time, low incline, velocity. Copy that. And paste. And then this dot way over there is because remember when we did the middle times, uh, that you end up with one less data point than what you started with. So this kind of, this last data point here is left over from last time. I wonder if maybe a better way to do this would be to delete this data. That way it doesn't get in the way. All right, so we got clock reading velocity and we'll do the same thing for our high incline data. Let's scooch over here. Copy the middle times. Come back and grab the velocities. Looks pretty good. Again, we'll change our title. Edit graph options. Velocity versus time or versus the clock reading. Always show zero, always show zero. And there we go. And we'll put our linear fits on there. Apply curve fit. Linear, apply. And again, try and scooch this so you don't cover up all of your data on the graph. Next up, we have uh, velocity versus position. And this is the one where you have to make a middle position column. So um, we'll go ahead and change our data again. We can change this to position. And centimeters. And then we can just over here and we've got the velocities already. We just need this middle position. Ooh, this is the high incline. 
Am I going to put this in the high incline spot? There we go. Get in the safe position. There we go. And come over here and grab the low incline positions. Copy that. Now this is kind of cool. You see this funny looking graph? Why does it look like this? Why do you have uh, points above and below? And it looks like it's going to make a shape where it's not a function, right? So I wonder if we can even, let's go ahead and change the name of the graph first so that it doesn't confuse you while you're looking at it. Velocity versus position. Uh, can we put a curve fit on here? Not that one. Not that one. Maybe this one? Not that one. Oh, wow, it just gets worse. It's not working. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no, none of the curves fit. Well, the reason is because this is a sideways parabola, it's not a function, so you won't be able to get a curve to fit that. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't linearize this graph to kind of figure out what the relationship is. And so if you think about, when you had uh, the up and down opening parabolas, it was y equals something times the x squared. This is a sideways parabola, and so it's uh, y squared equals something x. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to make a uh, another cal calculated column for the velocity squared. So, we'll just come over here, make a new column, centimeter squared per second squared will be our units. <clears throat> wow, messed that up, sorry. And then we just want to hit equals here because we're going to calculate this column uh, equals the velocity to the second power. And you get this gigantic number. It's okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here. You ever wonder if you could copy this formula? Maybe even copy these first three and paste it over here. Dude, you can because um, the relationship from this cell over to this cell is the same as the relationship over here. And so uh, when you paste the formula, it keeps that relationship. So it's got the right, uh, it's got the right um, reference in the formula still. All right. Uh, do you like four decimals on numbers that big? Probably not. By the way, in future units, we'll discuss how many decimal places you, you need to keep here. Okay, there's there's a rhyme and a reason to it. I'm just kind of we're just kind of winging it right now, um, but there are actually rules to this kind of thing, which we'll talk about hopefully sometime next semester. All right, so now we're going to copy and paste this velocity squared data in. There's my dog, wants to go outside, but he can't. So we'll change this to velocity squared. What if we cheat this a little bit and just put centimeters per second? quantity squared. Bam. Good enough. All right, so there's our stuff. We'll paste in our velocity squared data. Gigantic numbers. Oh, whoa, that's different, right? And then we'll do the same thing with our high incline. And there you go. Hey, look what happened there. Now we have no negative numbers. Hang on, let's change this title. Oops. Okay, 
all our negative numbers went away because when you square them, the negatives go away. And then now you've got this. It looks a little bit messy here, and there's a reason. Okay, there's a reason why the red data looks messy and the blue data looks good. The red data is actually a student's data from a different lab, and so it's measured and there's errors in the data. The blue data is nice and perfect because I um, I cheated and made that data up by putting formulas into a spreadsheet. So those numbers look really good. But anyway, if you look at this now, you can see that we have uh, linear linear data. We've linearized the graph. And so now we can say something about the relationship between velocity and position, and mainly that the velocity squared has a linear relationship with the position. And hopefully, if you play around with the units a little bit, you can figure out what the physical significance of the slope of this graph is. Okay, so there is your uh, graphing using a hybrid of Google Sheets and graphical analysis.